Thank you, Clive, uh, and uh, thank you everyone uh, for tuning in today to uh, listen to, to myself and uh, find out a little bit more about Brickworks. Um, could I have the next slide, please. And the next one, please. Brickworks can trace its history back to uh, 1908, where the Austral Brick Company was formed uh, in St Peter's uh, here in Sydney. And in 1934, Brickworks, uh, Austral Bricks was one of the 26 companies to form Brickworks Limited. They were actually formed to buy the state brickworks uh, at Homebush Bay from the state government, uh, which of course later became the site of the 2000 Olympics. Uh, in 1962, the company was listed on the stock exchange uh, and the company has grown enormously since then. And we're now able to offer to shareholders and potential shareholders, very stable management board, a conservative geared company, a top 200 in the ASX, um, we have an enormous history of dividend growth and value creation, and we have exposure to property in the, in the new economy areas. We also have some international growth. Next slide, please. Just looking at that uh, value creation for shareholders, uh, on the graph there you can see our dividend history um, and the asset value of the shares over that period of time, back to 19, uh, 1976. And that was a, a pivotal time in the company because it was the only time it, it, since we listed where the dividend was ever reduced. So um, we were very pleased uh, uh, last month for the directors to award a, a 20 cent dividend, increased interim dividend, which has been paid. Um, and also we're very pleased that if you invested $1,000 back in 1976, that would have grown at 13, over 13% 13 per annum for 44 years and be worth over $260,000 today. So we've come a long way in that time. Um, and the uh, directors are very pleased with what's been achieved. Next slide, please. <clears throat> if we look at the parts of the company today, um, starting with uh, the top right-hand corner there, uh, the investments, uh, this was created in 1968, but the company was worried about being taken over by the London Brick Company. And um, there was another company on the stock market, Washington H. Salt Patterson, that had a very similar market cap to Brickworks. And, and it was agreed that they would swap a million shares, it was quite legal at the time, uh, and that cross-shareholding has persisted to today. But following that, Brickworks invested a further $26 million to build up its stake, which now stands a little bit under 39% of uh, Washington H. Salt Patterson. And uh, it's got a value today of $1.8 billion. So it's obviously, you can see from that, it's been a fabulous investment. The uh, second part of the company there, right below that, the property trust, um, we had a lot of surplus land we realised we didn't need for our clay reserves going forward. In the early uh, 2000s, we decided that if we just sold the land, that would be a one-off uh, sugar hit uh, for the company and the shareholders, but we felt there was a longer-term position. So we formed a, a joint venture with Goodman, who was one of the world's greatest uh, industrial property um, developers and, and uh, trust managers. And uh, it's been a really fabulous um, relationship over this last 15 years or so. So that property trust now has, has grown to $2 billion and our share of that is a little bit over $700 million. Uh, it's just been a fab, fabulous um, outcome for us all. Then there's the uh, building products uh, in Australia, which was a traditional business. And if you went back to 2000, we had five factories in New South Wales and Queensland and that was it. And today that's a, a national business and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, but we've got $760 million worth of assets in there. And then more recently, we've invested $220 million in the North America, um, we're the leading brick maker now in the Northeast and Midwest and Mid-Atlantic regions. When you add all that up, there's over $3 billion worth of assets when you take off the debt. Um, and our market cap is currently $2.3 billion. You can see that our market cap is very well supported by the assets that are invested in the company. Next slide, please. Looking uh, at Washington Hakes Old Patterson, they're a diversified investment house with attractive portfolio of assets. The key sectors are involved in are telecoms, energy, building products, financials, health, pharmaceuticals and property. As I said before, we own 39.4% of them with a market value of $1.8 billion. We received last year $56 million in dividends. And they, like uh, Brickworks, have had a long history of, of paying dividends and they're one of only a couple of companies that has increased their dividend every year for the last 20 years. And if you'd invested in salt pats 20 years ago, you would have received 12% per annum return, which was 4.4% above the index, 
so it's been a fabulous performing uh, stock, um, and it's really been great that Brickworks has been able to be involved with them over this long period of time. Next slide, please. Looking now at the property, um, so as I said, you know, we, we started turning out surplus land. Um, you know, we, we put in the land, Goodman uh, put in the infrastructure, and then through their contacts, they usually find a company that um, wants a, a warehouse, and they sign a pre-lease, and that could be anything from five to 20 years. And it's some of the greatest uh, companies you hear in Australia, companies like Coles and Woolworths, um, and you would have heard of DHL. Um, these are the sort of companies that uh, you know, rent and lease our warehouses. So um, that's, as you can see here, has grown dramatically, as I mentioned before, $710 million worth of assets. It's grown at a compound rate since 2008 at 18% per annum. Uh, inside that trust, the gearing is less than 30%, so it's very conservatively managed. The EBITDA in the first half was $89 million, and that compares to the full year last year of $158 million. Next slide, please. If you look now at the building products in Australia, we've grown to 26 plants across Australia, 40 design centres or design studios. We have 1,300 employees. Our number one brand is Austral Bricks. We're the largest clay brick producer in Australia, and we make about half the bricks in Australia with every state. Uh, Austral Masonry, we're the number two masonry producer in Australia we're in every major state. Bristol Roofing, we're the number two roof tile manufacturer in Australia we're in all states. And Austral Precast, uh, we're in Queensland, West Australia, and New South Wales. And in New South Wales, we have the most advanced fully automated facility uh, anywhere in the country. Now, um, uh, the revenue last year was um, 338 million, sorry, the first half was 338 million and $39 million uh, EBITDA. And that compares to last year where EBITDA was 88 million. Next slide, please. So, uh, as I said, we set up about 18 months ago in the, in the Northeast, uh, Midwest and Mid-Atlantic regions of the United States. We bought three uh, great businesses, the main one being Glengarry, which was at the time the fourth biggest brick producer in America. Um, our main markets in the US are Boston, New York, Baltimore, Washington DC, Chicago. We do a lot of architectural work, so we do schools and hospitals, um, you know, fire stations. We do some of these fast food chains, and you know, over there they often build them in the thousands. Um, so it's not so much focused in residential, only about a third of our business is residential. Two thirds of our business is determined by an architect, architect specifying our product. Well, today we have about 770 employees. We have 10 operating plants, a one manufactured stone plant. We can produce about 400 million bricks and we'll turn over about $290 million Australian in a, in a full and normal year. Uh, and we sell in our own right and we sell through an extensive network of resellers and company outlets. Next slide, please. Well, the COVID virus has uh, had big impact on, on every company and like every other company in Australia, we've had to take steps um, that three or four months ago we wouldn't have thought would be necessary. Um, as a matter of fact, we felt that we passed the bottom of the last cycle and, and were starting to improve uh, in our sales and output in the early part of this year. So we've had to reduce our uh, output, uh, particularly during April to stop stock builds, because that can traditionally be quite a quiet period. In the US, where we had uh, indicated that we're going to rationalise a lot of the plants, we accelerated that, uh, and we've come down now to the final number of plants that we're going to keep, which is the 10 running plants I mentioned. Unfortunately, we have to let both in the US and Australia a total of about 200 staff go. Um, and while that was hard, it was in the longer term, it was we had to do it to uh, make sure that we were right sized for the market. Um, so that will save about $20 million per annum. We've deferred all non-critical capital expenditure, although we had a number of large projects that were underway, we're continuing with. And we, like all other companies, we've had a lot of lessons that have come out of that. And we find that our digital and sales marketing efforts have been well beyond our expectations, with us often talking to many thousands of customers in a week. We've accelerated our new product development to release uh, a little bit later in the year. We've um, spent a lot of time training our staff, and uh, there's something like four or 500 of our staff have now done uh, extensive training during this period. And but we're, we're also positive looking forward that, you know, both the governments in Australia and in the United States see that uh, construction is an integral, integral part of the recovery, and we're very heartened to see that the government here is talking about bringing a stimulus package out for housing, 
this might help fill a bit of a pothole we've got there that's been created over the last few months. Um, and of course, these accelerated trends we've seen as far as online shopping is actually you know, playing right into the hands of our property trust that we think we'll see increased demand in that area. So whilst the situation remains dynamic and the outlook uncertain, we're in a very strong position going forward. Uh, next slide, please. Just giving a bit of a trading update, looking at Australia. Um, our sales revenue was amazingly resilient um, in the last four months. It was down 10% and that was more affected in regional areas such as WA or in areas such as our precast business, which was servicing a lot of the high rise apartments, which was one of the first areas to slow down over the last, the last few years. Um, the plant closures have uh, obviously helped our cash generation, but adversely impacted our earnings. Um, we, received, we have achieved a positive earnings in the last four months. And we did receive a couple of weeks ago the development approval for our new $125 million brick plant at Horsley Park. Looking to North America, our, because the acquisition, our sales are actually uh, up 26%, but in reality, we're pretty close to what they were last year or down, if you like, on a like-for-like -like basis of 30%, if all that makes sense. Um, but we're hoping that uh, it's a county-by-county -county basis over there, and we're hoping that um, by the end of this week, most of Pennsylvania will open up. Uh, we're hoping that construction will recommence in New York next week. Um, and so we're hoping that things are gonna start picking up going forward. Unfortunately, or sadly, we've seen these rights, um, and some of them were quite close to our operation in Philadelphia, where we're building a new design studio. Um, but I can report that no property has been damaged, and all our safe, all our staff are, are safe and well. As far as the property is concerned, um, the pandemic has had no impact on our property trust rental income, which has been really good to see. Um, development activity has continued unabated right to this period, particularly through Oakdale East and Oakdale West. Um, and we have a number of significant development applications approved in this last period. Next slide, please. So on the screen, you can see a photo of the Oakdale West and you might get some idea of the scale of this massive uh, project, which is well in excess of 100 hectares. And the, you see there the civil works going in, which is costing in the order of $100 million. Um, so it is very significant um, for Western Sydney. Um, and you can see the pad start to take format there for one of our first new buildings, um, which we hope to commence shortly. Um, as I said, we received uh, approvals for that and another building in the last few months. Um, and, and so I think this is going to be something that really you need to keep an eye on going forward because it's going to mean um, an enormous amount to Brickworks and Woodman in the future years. But on the other side of that property at Oakdale East, we also received our approvals and that puts us in a position to subdivide that land and sell that into the property trust. And on that site, we'll be building a new masonry factory, um, which will cost uh, some $70 million. Uh, next slide, please. So in final, um, if anyone has any questions or are unable to take them here, but if you'd like to send an email to info at brickworks.com.au, uh, we'll do our best to answer your questions. So thank you very much. And I hope you've enjoyed this presentation.